I know what you're thinking. Why am I telling you how to breathe? So you take 25,000 breaths a day. Your breath is the only thing in your body that you can control, but also let run automatically. You can be the pilot or the passenger. Imagine if you could control with your mind how quickly your heart beats. You'd want to make sure that it's pumping blood around your body as efficiently as possible. Luckily for us, our heartbeats are automatic, so we don't have to worry about that. Breathing, on the other hand, because we can control it, if we're not paying attention to it, we can be breathing inefficiently. Recently, a book came out by James Nestor called Breath. So he says 90% of us are not breathing correctly. Most of us breathe too quickly and too shallow. And a lot of us even stop breathing at times without even realizing. When we don't want to feel something, we hold our breath. So for example, there's something called email apnea that's holding your breath when you read your email. So if you find that you get anxious when you're checking your work emails in the morning, see if you're holding your breath when you check it. So he talks about how eight out of the 10 most common cancers affect organs in the body that are denied blood flow during states of stress. So when you don't have enough blood flow, you don't have enough oxygen. And a lot of cancers develop and thrive in areas of low oxygen. So he's not saying that breathing will prevent cancer 100% of the time, but it will help oxygenate your body. And the best way to oxygenate your body is to take slower breaths, take less breaths, have correct breathing posture and breathe out your nose. So when he says take slower breaths and take less breaths, it's been calculated that the optimum speed to breathe at is 5.5 breaths a minute. Mathematically that works out as being each inhale being 5.5 seconds and each exhale being 5.5 seconds. When we breathe at that speed, blood flow to the brain increases. So this results in systems in your body entering this state of coherence where your heart, your lungs and your nervous system operate in coordination and they operate at peak efficiency. I can't breathe and count that exact amount every time, but I know that when my regular state of breathing is running automatically, it's not 5.5 seconds, it's much quicker than that. Correct breathing posture is having your lips together, your teeth lightly touching, your tongue sitting on the roof of your mouth, so at rest, the tip of your tongue should sit on the ridge just behind the front teeth. But it's not just your mouth, it's also to do with your body posture. So body posture isn't just important for avoiding things like aches and pains, but also for breathing efficiently. So when sitting or standing, your spine should form a J shape. So the top of the spine is straight and it curves at the end naturally. Most people today have their shoulders hunched forwards, necks extended out and their spine is in an S shape. But by straightening your posture into a J shape, it allows air to enter your body more easily. And the last point is nose breathing. So one nose breath will give you 20% more oxygen than one mouth breath. So breathing through the nose allows it to filter, heat, moisten and condition the air. And that makes it more efficiently pass through our lungs. Filtering is especially important because it can act as our first line of defense to prevent viruses and other germs from coming into our body. Nose breathing also increases the production of a chemical called nitrous oxide. Sorry, not, not nitrous oxide. That's the thing you put in your car to make it go faster. So nose breathing also increases the production of nitric oxide. So nitric oxide expands your airways so it can help your lungs work better. So nose breathing leads to better oxygen use, less stress on the heart and better recovery. The way to breathe properly through your nose is something called diaphragmatic breathing. So what this means is you're breathing out your belly rather than your chest. The way to know this is if you breathe in and your belly comes out first, then you're doing it right. But if you breathe in and your chest comes out first, then you're using secondary muscles and less air can come into your body. So when you breathe through your nose, it's way easier to be breathing through your belly. When you breathe through your mouth, it's very easy to be breathing through your chest. So it's estimated that around 25 to 50% of people breathe through their mouth. Because you're taking in less air, this type of breathing is more likely to activate the stress response in your body. Breathing through your belly also activates something called the vagus nerve, which I'll talk about in another video. But because it activates the vagus nerve, it can help relax and calm you down. There's something called vocal fry that you see Americans talk a lot like. And I realized it was just the lighting. So that happens when the vocal cords vibrate, but there's no air there. So you can get rid of that vocal fry by breathing through your diaphragm. You'll speak more clearly and more deeply by breathing through your diaphragm. All professional singers breathe through their diaphragm. 
If you're snoring at night, you're mouth breathing. Mouth breathing causes the body to lose 40% more water, so you're more likely to wake up dehydrated, tired, less focused, and with stinky breath. So there's a way to fix snoring where they talk about putting tape over your mouth. It sounds extreme at first, but it's really not that bad because you're not gonna die. If you put a tape over your mouth, it just forces you to use your nose for breathing more. So it's a really good way to pick up the habit of nose breathing without using up a lot of mental energy. You can buy specific kinds of tape where it's made specifically to put over your mouth before going to bed. So it's not gonna be as harsh or abrasive as using sellotape. So for me, breathing slower, breathing less and breathing out my nose were the main things that I couldn't always remember to do. But when I noticed that I wasn't doing it, I brought myself back to that breathing rhythm and just remembered for the next time. And eventually the habit stuck. So I don't have to put in any energy to remember to breathe in and out of my nose now because it's just an automatic thing. So in summary, the book highlights the importance of taking less breaths, taking slower breaths, breathing with correct posture, and breathing through your nose. So that was just briefly what the book spoke about. It talks about loads of other things. So if you're interested in buying the book, I'm gonna put an affiliate link in the description below. In the next video, I'm gonna talk about some other points he mentions in the book, like why British people have crooked teeth. So what has made people get around the jaw lines and how to do a specific technique to help get a more square and defined jawline. Later.